Okay, full disclosure, I don't know much about the Blue Beetle. Ted Cord, I mean. Or any other one, actually. I know he had some sort of buddy cop thing going with Booster Gold, who I also don't know much about. What I do know about Ted Cord was he was kind of a version of Bruce Wayne, only funnier in my opinion. He was some kind of high-tech business owner. Maybe he was a millionaire, a billionaire, but he was light-hearted. Definitely a different version of Bruce Wayne. If I'm wrong about this, be sure to let me know down in the comments. My point is, even though I don't know much about Ted Cord and his version of Blue Beetle, I always thought of him as dis as I described. And because of that, I always thought he was kind of a cool character. Jaime Reyes, the new Blue Beetle, is the complete opposite. He's not a tech millionaire. He's a 16-year-old high school student from El Paso. And while his armored suit is certainly high-tech, it's not because of new gadgets and gizmos he invented, but because of some mystical scarab. Or at least that's what we're led to believe in the first few issues. Reading the first big volume of the first 12 issues of the new Blue Beetle was interesting, but I don't know if I was completely captivated by this character. It kind of hurts to say that because I was always a big fan of the original Power Rangers, and I thought this version of Blue Beetle could have been something like that. But reading this first volume felt like I was putting together pieces of a puzzle that weren't quite fitting all together. The series starts with a bang, with the Blue Beetle fighting a Green Lantern, Guy Gardner. It's a nice touch and gets the reader right into the action, but by the end of the first issue, we're told Jaime has been gone for an entire year. So I know DC had a storyline at this time. Uh, it, it really spanned the entire company. It was sort of a reboot of sorts, if I recall right. And again, let me know, correct me in the comments down below. But the entire DC Comics universe time jumped a whole year. So I get that it was needed in this comic. But early on, we're told Jaime has been in space helping Superman fight some battle. But we're not told why he was there or how he got there or why he was even left wherever he was left. It makes the early issues of this brand new series a little hard to follow for someone who wasn't following anything DC Comics. Whether it's the crossovers, any of the other comics, or the big crossover Infinite Crisis. Imagine someone picking up this book for the first time, not knowing anything about Blue Beetle, and get, hoping to get a cool origin story, but getting dropped into the middle, or the end basically, of the first act of this character's story. Not a good look if you ask me. Another thing, and this might just be me being a little nitpicky, but I really don't like when writers write dialogue for characters and add accents to them. It takes me out of the story, especially when writers try to write one of those thick accents like Irish or French. When it comes to Blue Beetle, this first 12 issue big volume of Blue Beetle is written mostly by Keith Giffen and John Rogers. As I said, the alter ego of Blue Beetle in this series is Jaime Reyes, a teenager who lives in El Paso with a vast Hispanic population, and the dialogue written, while I'm sure well intentioned, comes off as someone doing a bad impression of Edward James Olmos, who's mocking a cholo from Stand and Deliver. Aureli, I'm a tough guy. Tough guys don't do man. Tough guys deep fried chicken for a living. Sorale. I am a big fan of the artwork in this book. The majority of the issues are drawn by Cully Hamner, but there are fill-in artists like Duncan Rouleau, who is also the cover artist for the series, and then Ralph Real Albuquerque draws the last two issues of this 12-issue volume. Now, from here on forward, the following does contain spoilers, so if you don't want any spoilers and want to read it first, go ahead and pause the video right now. It's not until the end of issue 6, we're halfway through this first volume, that we learn the scarab attached to Jaime Reyes isn't some mystical piece of equipment, but actually a piece of alien technology. I'm still not sure how I feel about this as a 180 turn in this whole story. Up until this point, the information that was being revealed to the reader, the reader who I should add is someone who has no idea what's going on with this character, we're steadily on a magical track for this book. Jaime meets a gang called the Posse who are all young adults with magical powers, and they can sense Blue Beetle, which is why we're thinking, as readers, that his powers are magic-based. We're also given a cameo of Phantom Stranger, who is looking out for magical beings, and who himself says at one point in issue 6, to think that old power has returned in the new age. So the sudden turn of telling us Jaime's power is actually alien tech really comes out of left field. Finally, in issue 7, we start getting some answers. That mysterious dude who's been on the motorcycle is actually Peacemaker. I was out of DC Comics during this whole time, so I never really knew who Peacemaker was to begin with. The version presented in this comic book series is definitely not the one presented to audiences in James Gunn's movie universe. Also in issue 7, we're finally, we're finally talking about Jaime and the fight he had with Guy Gardner. You know, the one that happened all the way back in issue 1. 
we actually learn that Blue Beetle helped Batman and members of the Justice League stop Brother Eye. This, I think, is a big problem for new readers. Like I said, I wasn't following much of, much of, or if anything, of DC Comics at the time, so I had no idea what was going on with their other comics or the crossover Infinite Crisis. That makes this story kind of cool that Jaime is meeting the Justice League, but definitely confusing as to why and what else was going on. It puts all the responsibility on the reader to go back and figure out what was happening with the rest of DC Comics, instead of, you know, just enjoying a new character's origin story. I will say in issue 7, it does give us the gist of what happened and what's really going on with Jaime and the Scarab. It's alien tech that was created by someone or something that has major issues with Green Lanterns. It's a nice setup for possible fights with Green Lanterns because of the origins of the Scarab, even if the new Blue Beetle is a good guy. Issue 8, we're given a nice change of pace where we actually get some backstory on the very first Blue Beetle, Dan Garrett. Since I knew next to nothing about this character, it was nice to learn a little more about the Golden Age superhero, or at least the new origin the series was crafting for him. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, the entire second half of this first volume, if you're reading the 12-issue volume Blue Beetle, Jaime Reyes, is a much better origin story than the first five issues the series started out with. Not only do we get a better recap of what went down with Jaime, we get information on Peacemaker, we get more character development with Jaime and his friends, Paco and Brenda. It's too bad that this 12-issue volume starts with those first five issues because of how jumpy and misplaced and scattered it seems because of all the crossover stuff going on with DC Comics. Issues 6 through 12 do a much better job of telling the origin story, telling you who Jaime Reyes is, what he's been through, and getting a handle on this new life as a superhero. So I have no idea how close this comic book origin will be to the movie. From all indications by the trailer, it doesn't look like it's going to be anything close. The trailer seems like it's making its own origin story for the Blue Beetle, which is fine. Let's just hope it's coherent and they don't try to stuff too much information into it. As far as this volume goes, it's okay. It's not the best superhero origin story, mostly because as I've described, it's all over the place. But the artwork is fun and it's cool to get a new, younger superhero in the mix. A lot of people call this new Blue Beetle a young Iron Man type character, but I really look at it more as a play on Power Rangers with a high-tech alien suit, and that thing can do so many incredible things. So, I'm not sure what the future is for Jaime Reyes and the Blue Beetle going forward, especially after the movie. If the movie bombs, maybe they'll just settle on the character and fade him into the background. If the movie does really good, maybe there'll be a bigger arc for this character in the comic books. Who knows? But, if you have want something to read that's kind of like a mix between... Power Rangers and Iron Man with a cool new character that's a, a teenager. Yeah, might as well try to give this one a try.